All right, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hope Savaro here with a daily dose of hope. I was working on some technical difficulties here, and we're going to play this. Let's see if we can get it to work here. There we go. There you have it. You are listening to A Daily Dose of Hope with Hope Zavara and Chrome and Steel Radio. It's Thursday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm coming to you live from Wisconsin. All right. Welcome back. I hope everybody is doing fantastic. I have been a little out of sorts. I know you probably have hopefully missed me um, for September, but I was on the road quite a bit with Shannon from the St. Christopher's Truckers Relief Fund. I don't have my coffee mug with my sticker on this morning. Otherwise, I'd give my coffee mug a little shout out. I got my lady boss coffee mug here today. So how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. I am excited to be coming to you live today. Uh, I was going to have a guest, but then we had some difficulties. So uh, he'll be on again in the future. So today I wanted to talk about something that maybe you didn't know existed. There's pretty much something for every day of the entire year or grouping of year or a quarter of the year or whatever it is. Um, and starting October 1st was the last 90 days. It was the last 90 days of the year before 2020 rolls around. And I love this time of year because it's a great time to mentally get back on track. So whether it is you are trying to eat more healthy or you're trying to move more, or you're trying to not watch so much Netflix and chill, or stop smoking or whatever it is, it's kind of an opportunity to go, hey, look, you might have blown the whole year, but you still have time to try to make some things right. Now, you probably know I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions, and so you're probably like, Hope, why the heck are you talking about the last 90 days? I'm talking about the last 90 days because, and this is one reason why I am okay with New Year's resolutions, only in the fact that it helps us regroup on a mental level and reset and realign with our goals. Now, maybe you're not somebody that sets goals. Maybe you're not somebody that has dreams for your future. And I want to tell you, you got to change that. You have to change that. Because there is a lot of research out there that also says that those of us that do not dream, that do not have goals, that do not have something to try to live up for, guess what? We go like this through life. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're not happy with where you are right now, that is a first sign for you that something's got to change that we have to change something. I have my phone over here um, so that I can try to check for comments. Let's see if I can be organized enough to do this here. Uh, so we're, we're trying to work this out here, but um, we are trying to, we are trying to, okay, make these positive changes so that we can have a better future. A lot of you know my background, um, so I struggled with an eating disorder for a big chunk of my life, um, and I have struggled with depression and anxiety and social anxiety, uh, which you'd never guess, but uh, that is something that um, is definitely, I think, something I'm always working on. And also just the constant daily grind of being distracted by stuff that doesn't matter. I mean, drop it in the comment section. How often do you find yourself down this rabbit hole of something that like does not even serve you or your community or your greater good? It's like, here we are. I got my day planned. I got my notebook. I got my computer or, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got my load strapped down. Everything's organized. I've talked to my broker. I know what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden it's like, or maybe it's today I'm not going to smoke. Well, today I'm not going to have a cigarette or today is going to be the day that I make it a point every Thursday to call my mom, whatever it is, all of a sudden we go down this rabbit hole of no return and these goals, these intentions fall to the wayside. So why does that happen? Why is it that it's like black or white? 
that we're either good or we're not. We're either successful or we're not. And it starts up here, my friend. It starts up here. It starts in this cabeza, it starts in your head, it starts in your thoughts, it starts in your belief system, I'm not talking religion, I'm talking about what you believe. It starts in what you've stored in your memory as how to approach life. This is something that I have had to work really hard at unwiring, okay? What I mean by that is I got into my 20s and I had realized that I had observed and absorbed and, and kind of like ingrained in myself some really bad habits. External habits, internal habits, internal dialogue, views on others and life. They weren't mine, but I had observed them from other people in my life on a consistent basis. And I didn't know it. I didn't choose it but they became mine. And so if you're someone that struggles a lot, I really want to encourage you today, not tomorrow. Don't tell me, oh, hope this isn't convenient for me today. I'm too busy. Well, then I got news for you. You're probably going to be too busy for the rest of your life. And this is something that I've told myself. I always said, tomorrow, I'm going to step into recovery. Tomorrow, I'm going to stop doing this and that. Tomorrow, I'm going to stop overeating. Tomorrow, I'm going to stop overexercising. Tomorrow, I'm going to get help. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Can you guess that I did that for more than five years? More than 10 years. More than 15 years. Where I kept telling myself those lies because I didn't want to change today. Because in my mind, I'd already blown it. In my mind, I was like, I already, I already messed up today. I'm just going to mess up the rest of the day. I didn't think I was worth trying today. These were all thoughts. These were all beliefs. These were all intention, things in my head that I did not choose to take on. I did not choose it. So I want you to know this because sometimes some of our habits some of our outlooks on life have just been kind of like subliminally messaged into our head. Like, I'm taking this in. It's not mine, but I'm taking it in. And so I had observed early on in my life that, you know, people around me, it was, you know, they were dumb, stupid, and nobody. They judged everybody around themselves. They had a very low self-esteem. They were not willing to try new things. And I found myself in that same category then. I found myself following in those footsteps. And I want to tell you this, you don't have to do that. I found myself in a place that I kept saying, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me. Poor me, you don't know how hard it is. My life sucks more than yours. I never get a leg up. I'm struggling, struggling, struggling. And all that was true, true to a point. But then I never did more than that. And maybe you can relate. Maybe you know somebody where it's like, dude, I cannot be around that. I want to tell you, in these last 90 days, well, what is the day now today? It's the third. So what would that be? The last uh, 87 days, you can at least start making those first steps in the right direction. And one of the things I love most about this life and living in this country right now, still, is that you have the freedom to make that choice. I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna be, gonna be um, maybe a little off-putting right now and say that you don't get to tell me back, but hope my situation is so unique, is so special, is so different, that you don't understand how hard it is. I wanna tell you, I have been at some pretty dark and disgusting rock bottoms. Like, I'm not happy about it. I'm not proud of it. I, um, I wouldn't say I'm ashamed because I'm kind of past that in my life, but eh, pretty bad, Pr pretty, pretty low, pretty low. And I get it, I get it. So the first step, the first goal in the last 90 days for you is to, first of all, write it down. 
I don't have my journal down here, um, but I have one of them here. So, where is it? okay. So make, get a piece of paper, get a notebook, whatever it is. I don't care what you have. Get a napkin, get a toilet paper roll, whatever it is. I don't care. Get something. Okay, this is step one, the last 90 days. Step one is to write it down. What do you want in life? So when I was struggling to get into recovery, what I wanted most is to be in recovery, was to live a normal life, was to not wake up and have the first thing be food on my brain. And, and every time I'd go to a friend's house or a gathering or out with who's now my husband, it would be like thinking about what I was going to eat, when I was going to eat it, when I was going to binge and purge, how could I over exercise later on? Like what it was like seriously. I, I, I added up the time at one time. It was like 10 to 12 hours a day. I was spending obsessing or acting in that addiction. And I know you might not have an eating disorder, but guess what? We're all addicted to something. Maybe it's Netflix and then chilling. Maybe it's scrolling Facebook and Instagram. You just can't help yourself. You can do more with your time. Obviously, watch my show. But beyond that, you are worth more. You can be more productive. You want to be where you see those other people? You have to make the changes. You have to make the changes. I, I, I know that there's a lot of magic pills on the market. I haven't really seen one that truly works yet. Let me know if you find one. The best thing that works is you putting in the effort, truly. And I mean that, I do not share, I do not speak, I do not talk about stuff that I am not doing in my own life, that I have not applied, that I have not been working on, otherwise I'm just a bunch of smoke and mirrors, okay? So that being said, these last 90 days, what are you gonna do? These last 87 days, what are you going to do? And truck driver or not, office worker, sewer pipe layer, electrician, teacher, stay-at-home parents, lost in Neverland, whatever, what are you going to do with these last 87 days of the year? And the reason why I want to have this fresh in your brain is because if you've never created a plan for yourself, this might be part of the struggle. And I'm sharing this because I didn't realize that in my personal life, in my business, even in my family, it's a really good idea to have a plan, to have goals, to have framework. That's part of the reason why there's a little bit of structure. I think school has too much structure, but it's like, you know what you're supposed to do. You know when you're supposed to show up. That's one of my hardest things about working for myself is if I don't have structure, if I don't have things planned out in my calendar, if, and this is, I only have uh, four months up right now, but um, over here on my wall is my calendar. I literally write everything in there. And, and I make sure that I know exactly where I'm supposed to be and when and, and due dates and deadlines, um, even stuff like this I have planned and I'm going to try to um, see if I can actually like play this live so I can see comments. There we go. Yeah, I can see comments. Um, hey, Rebecca, how are you? So I'm going to try to do a little bit better trying to watch comments here on, on Facebook. Uh, Rebecca says, if life would leave me alone, I could stay focused. I totally understand that, Rebecca. I totally understand that, that getting like punched down to the ground over and over and over again. And I, when, when I was struggling the way I was, and then we lost our daughter and my husband had a job, I had a new job. I, my, my family was in turmoil. It was like, I, I was the black sheep of the family. I just felt like, my gosh, can I get hit with a baseball bat anymore? And I just kept telling myself, this is building me up for later. 
because I always had in my head, I always knew where I wanted to go. I had this end goal, okay? I didn't know all the middle stuff. That was all foggy, but I had this end goal. I believed that there was a purpose for me in life, okay? I had to believe that all of the shit that was getting thrown at me, I always felt like it was unfair when I was younger because all my friends kind of seemed like they had it a lot easier and I was really struggling, like really struggling. I had dyslexia. Um, my, my dad was an alcoholic my, my family, just so many different things. And, um, and that's all here, no, there, but I had to keep telling myself, this is making me stronger because whatever comes next, I have to be resilient enough to take it. And I think sometimes, and I'm saying this, not just for you, Rebecca, I'm saying this for me and for everybody else. I think sometimes this is the differentiating line between people who want it and people who really don't. And I mean this with the utmost respect, gratitude, and kindness in my heart. And the reason why I'm saying this is if you look at anybody in life, anybody in life that is one step ahead of you or 200 steps ahead of you, they have gotten beaten down with a baseball bat so many times, it, we probably wouldn't even be able to wrap our head around it. And the reality is they just don't share it with the world. They're not spilling their guts about every little thing that's gone wrong in their, in their life. So you'd be crazy to not know that several of the millionaires that are in this world, several of the people that are making six, seven, eight figures have declared bankruptcy multiple times. Their businesses have failed multiple times. They have made investments in things multiple times and they have gone belly up, but they are resilient. So Rebecca, I know some of the stuff that you're going through, be resilient, be resilient. You will get through this. If you are have breath in your body, you can make it through anything. This is what I told myself this is what I tell myself every day. If I wake up and I got breath in my body, I'm still alive. God has a purpose for me still. There is value for me on this earth and I need to do my best to live up to that. And I believe that you can do that. You have made so many changes. You have made so much progress. You have really changed your outlook on life. And maybe it's time to fine tune that even more. One of the things that I have really learned about myself is, is it mine or not to deal with? Is it mine or not to have on my plate? Because there's empathy and there's support. And then there's trying to live somebody else's life. I have some family members that just can't help, just can't help but insert themselves into others' lives when they're struggling. And every time they insert themselves, guess what? These people never learn. And then the cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. And, and I told, so I, I totally get it. And I support you. And please know if there's anything that I can do for you, I want to be here for you. But you can do this. You can do this. You can be resilient. You can move forward. And so I want to ask you, Rebecca, have you written down your goals? Are they clear? Can you see them? This is the last 90 days of the year. What do you want to accomplish? Where do you want to go? What are your goals? And I want you to know that there is no goal too small. There is no goal too big. So if your goal is to just wake up 15 minutes earlier every single day, by gosh, that is an awesome goal. If your goal is to make it to work on time every day, if your goal is to make a good meal for your family at least once a week, if your goal is to not eat fast food every Wednesday, I'm just throwing a day out there, whatever it is, that is a goal and that is good enough and that is big enough. If your goal is to increase your income, if your goal is to make more money, if your goal is to be home more, if your goal is to travel somewhere every single year, if your goal is whatever it is, when is the last time you wrote it down? When is the last time you took it from in your head, in your thoughts, and actually put it on paper? You actually voiced it to other people to then hold you accountable in your life. So something happens in the brain when we write something, not when we type, not when we type, when we actually write something, something happens in our brain and we solidify it. We actually put it in a different box 
in our brain when we write something down. And so I want to encourage you to write out what your goals are. What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? But here's the step that you may have missed, because I know many of you on here right now, you do write out your goals. I've seen it. You've showed videos and pictures of it on Facebook. It's awesome. Are you writing them every single day? That's the magic. Are you taking 30 seconds, three minutes, whatever it is in the morning or in the evening, whatever it is, but I like the morning to actually write them down. Just keep writing them. I actually have a journal. I have a notebook. Okay, it's a notebook that every day I write down the same goals. Seems redundant, seems stupid, seems silly, but here's the thing. Every time I write it down, there's a part of my brain that believes it to be true. It's no different than why I make my kids write their spelling words down when they're learning them. My son especially. Because it just doesn't, it doesn't stay. It doesn't stick. It doesn't become a reality. The same thing has to be true for your goals. So now if you're thinking in your head, hope that's so dumb, I'm not going to do that. Well, then guess what? You probably don't want to reach those goals as much as you say that you do. And this was a struggle I had for quite a while because when I was early in recovery, I wrote down all my goals. I had a gratitude journal, did all those things. So I was really struggling. I was at rock bottom. You usually do more things when you're there. And then I, I stepped into recovery. I kind of stepped away from that stuff. And so the last couple of years, I've been trying to get back into those things. And I got to be honest with you. When I write my goals down every single day, they're so much more clear as to what I want and what I want to do. I stay more accountable to myself. And that would be the second thing, last 90 days. Who are you accountable to? Who are you accountable to? Have you told somebody what you want? So St. Christopher's Trucker Relief Fund has a Rigs Without Sigs program and they have a Facebook group. And I see people all the time in there posting about how long they've been smoke free or that they're struggling or that, that they want to start, start quitting smoking. The accountability is worth its weight in gold. The accountability that we can get from letting others in will accelerate us to our goals. Let me give you an example. So I struggled for a really long time to get into recovery. I struggled with drugs, alcohol, food, all of that stuff. So I get it. Um, and I never told anybody for a really long time. Like some of my family knew, but I never opened up to them about my struggle. I was struggling by myself. I was dealing with it by myself because I felt like I was a burden. And can you believe it? It took me a long ass time to get out of that hole to get out of that septic tank, to get out of that ditch. It took me a really long time. It took me a really long time. And it is a big part because I didn't let others in to what I was trying to do. I, I didn't. And so I see that that is a huge, huge, huge factor in trying to reach your goals. And I don't care if you're a truck driver. I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom. I don't care what you are. Your profession does not matter when it comes to the last 90 days, setting your goals, staying accountable. So today, write down your goals. What are they? 10 or less, okay? It's okay to have 10, 10 or less. And you keep writing them down every single day. You do not miss a day until you've met that goal and you cross it out. I love crossing them out and you add a new one and you keep doing this. This is the conversation I have in my head. Okay. Because I actually fought myself for a pretty long time, not wanting to do this. I know this is like, so dumb. I'm just totally being honest here. Um, I, I would be like, I don't have time for that. And then one day I tracked my time. I tracked how I used my time and I was disgusted at how much time I wasted during the day, pretending to be busy, finding pockets of my day that I was not using to the best of my ability. I'm not saying you need to be like gung ho, you know, pedal to the metal from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. I'm not saying that. 
But what I am saying is this goes back to mother trucker yoga, one small change. We all have five minutes. Seriously, we all have five minutes to spare. We do. And if you don't, let me follow you around for a day and I will find five minutes for you. I will find five minutes for you. This is the whole baseline of that thing I was talking about, about like the, the subconscious beliefs in our head about how we view ourselves and view life and what we believe to be true. And, and you might think I'm talking crazy talk, okay? But, but this is a big factor in making any changes in our lives. We have to self-assess. We have to self-observe. We have to write things down. We have to change our brain. We have to open up and let people in and help them hold us accountable. There is an amazing, amazing um, author, and I think he's a doctor or something, um, Richard, Richard Caldini. Um, he wrote the book Influence. It's an awesome book. And in the book, he talks about Chinese concentration camps. And in the Chinese concentration camps, they had POWs there for a very, very long time. And they were in captivity. And, and the Chinese concentration camps, the people there running them, treated the prisoners very differently than other places than we do in the US or anywhere else, like you know, many years ago. And what they did was instead of being like, you must love communism, tell me you love communism or I'm gonna shoot you. Like they didn't do that. They actually treated them fairly well and they asked them to do simple requests. Like here's a piece of paper. I would like you to write down this phrase. And it was something about loving communism or seeing that communism is good. And people would write it down or for the prisoners that wouldn't write it down, they would say, okay, just copy this phrase from this book and write it on this notepad. Seems harmless, right? But writing something down, the power of the pen, not typing the pen, changes something in our brain where we slowly begin to believe it's real and true. And so day after day after day, these people in these concentration camps had to write these things down. And eventually they realized they got smarter, not, not, not the prisoners necessarily, but the people running the concentration camps got smarter and they started to reward. They started to reward the prisoners. They would say things like, we're gonna write an essay and it would be about politics or government. And we're gonna reward the people that write the best essay with an apple or a few cigarettes or a piece of bread, whatever it was, small, small rewards, okay? But they, they mattered. And so they would start to write these essays. And the people running the concentration camp didn't wanna be biased to the, those of them that would write about communism. So once in a while they would pick an essay that was written about US you know, politics and government, but the prisoners, started to get smart and realized if I write about how much I love communism and the logic behind it and how it makes sense, then I have a better chance of winning. And what they didn't realize was happening was they were starting to believe what they were writing. They were starting to have a more logical perspective on thinking communism's not that bad. And so when they were released from this concentration camp, they, they did a full analysis of these prisoners. And what they came to find is before they hated communism, it was horrible, it was bad. After the population of people that were taken out, you can listen to his book, I listen to audiobooks, and they talk about this. Afterwards, the prisoners that were pulled out of this concentration camp either supported communism or had more of a neutral ground, a neutral feeling to communism, where it's like, it's not that bad. I understand it. The power of writing something down. The power of writing something down. So are you gonna write down your goals? I mean, I think, I think that this is something we definitely wanna to talk to. I'm gonna look at the comment section here. 
Take life one moment at a time. Hey, good morning, Al. Remember, life is not a competition. You do not have to do to make yourself happy. If you are happy, you can make the family happy. I love it. I love it, Al. Good morning, Terry. Hey, Mandy, Joe, how are you? We're just talking about the last 90 days. We're talking about goal setting and, and moving forward in life and holding yourself accountable to your goals and, and really looking at what you want in life, what you want in life. And am I taking the necessary steps to get there? Because here's something that I do regularly. I look at myself, I talk to myself, I write things down and I go, okay, how long have I been wanting this for? And are my actions matching my desires, my wants? Okay. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people. I met a lot of people over the years. And I know a big, good enough group of people. They're not like all a group, but like if you put them all together, that know a lot about a lot, but yet they're not applying it to their life. They're the expert in health. They're the expert in fitness. They're the expert in business, but yet you're not applying it to their life. You don't want to be that person. Okay. Truth. You do not want to be that person. Why are you not applying it? Why are you not applying it? Are the goals that you want, is the knowledge that you have not laid out in your life in a way that helps you attain it, that helps you reach it, that helps you get there? So in the last 90 days, it's 87 now, um, it's October 3rd. Are you writing down your goals? Have you ever wrote down your goals? And I know this might sound silly and, and stupid and, you know, why waste my time on that? Well, then guess what? You must not want them that bad because this is a non-invasive action. It takes very little effort. I'm not asking you to go to the doctor. I'm not asking you to quit smoking right now. I'm not asking you to give me your left leg, okay? Nothing. I'm not asking you to give me blood and wipe it on the screen of your, of your uh, phone right now. Just asking you to write them down. In the thought process, in the action that something changes in your brain. And as a result, as a result, you start to make changes in your life. This is why when I went into outpatient treatment, Every single day, we had to write down what we were eating and how we were using our time and, and just what we were feeling so that it was like out there and the things that we wanted. Like, I want to be blank. I had to write that down every single day. I want blank. I had to write that down every single day. And it was one, I was reading what I was writing, but two, I was writing it every single day. And that is what really accelerated me into recovery. And that's why things like that work. Okay, so so write it down. Open yourself to accountability. Open yourself to accountability. Let others know what your goals are. Stop BSing. Stop BSing. And I'm saying everything I'm saying to you because I'm saying it to myself. Okay, stop BSing. How can I best use my time on this earth? How can I be a better asset to my family and my friends? How can I use the gifts and talents that I've been given in this life the way that they were intended to be used and more? Those are your goals. Those are your dreams. Those are your aspirations. That's what you want more out of life. And so, you know, it's little things like I want to make sure I get up from my desk at least five times during the day and do something. I want to make sure that once I'm parked for the night, I go for at least a 20 minute walk. I want to make sure that I at least do five resistance bands moves a day. I want to, my goal is to drink three bottles of water a day. My goal is to smoke one less cigarette for this whole week or for this whole month, whatever it is. Okay. Write it down and then know that I'm listening 
your spouse, your children, your friends, your Facebook group, whatever it is, will help you hold yourself accountable. So that those wires in your brain can change. And you can start to live your best life today. Misery loves company. We all know that. Misery loves company. We all know that person that just loves to complain, loves to complain. And everything is aching and wrong and bad and, and horrible. It's like a competition to who has a worse life. I refuse to be that person. There is stuff going on in my life. There are struggles going on in my life that I don't like air out my dirty laundry to everybody because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I either focus on the bad or I focus on the good. I either focus on what's wrong or I focus on what's going right. And we as humans, this is important, we as humans, our brains tend to prefer the negative, okay? The media has figured that out. Why do you think they blast negativity at you all the time? They tell you everything that's always going wrong and, and they, they have headlines based in fear because you respond to that. And so I want you to know, I want you to know that this is really important that we understand what goes up here on up here is usually what our actions are. So when I was really, really at a place, I was really unhappy. I felt really alone. I felt really sad. I, I just felt just broken. It was really hard for me to make good intentions and actions without writing things down, without having accountability and letting people in my life, and, and without admitting to myself where I actually was. And I do this over and over and over again. I just did this with my business. When I made the decision to close my yoga studio, there was a lot of things that played into that. A lot of things that played into that. It wasn't just, I want to work with Mother Trucker Yoga and, and I want to do more speaking. Like, that's great, but I have to look at the numbers. I have to look at where I'm spending my time. I have to look at sucking my energy. I have to look where, you know, what is making me happy and what is just the constant frustration sea of just craziness. Because yes, in life, you're gonna, um, you're gonna struggle and things are gonna be hard. That's not a reason to not do something because it's hard, okay? Most things in life are hard, okay? They just are. Doesn't mean you can't tackle them. Doesn't mean that they're not, they're impossible. It is challenging to eat healthy in a truck. It is challenging to work out and add more movement into your day as a driver. I'm not going to candy coat that. It's hard, but it's not impossible because I have met countless people that are doing it successfully. Make the choice up here. Tell people about it and then start to take the steps to do it. We're going to fumble. We're going to fall. We're going to stumble. We're going to mess up. We're going to, we're going to, you know, have a bad day. I had a bad day a couple of weeks ago, actually last week, just really low day. Just really, it was dreary out. I don't do well with that. When the weather changes, I just was really feeling down. I was frustrated. Things weren't going the way I wanted to them. I just felt like, you know, I was getting lost in the shuffle and I had a really bad day. But I can't let that one really bad day completely derail everything that I do in my life. I just can't. I just can't. You're more resilient than that. I know you are. So Stephanie says, this has been really interesting listening to you. I realize I haven't really thought about my goals in a while. See, see, that's just it. Like, what do you want? What do you want? And here's something that I, I still get a little uncomfortable with because I have my list of 10 goals and I write them down every single day. Like that's a non-negotiable. You guys, it takes me, I think like two minutes and 30 seconds. That is it to write these suckers down. And I have a notebook that's designated just towards that. Okay. Like if you get up in the morning and you get on Facebook, my friends, 
get up and write down your goals, then get on Facebook. Okay. Like you have time. Do not, do not comment to me that you have no time because that is the biggest lie. I'm calling you out. Okay. So, so I wake up in the morning and I write down my goals. Here's what I figured out about a year ago. And I didn't really realize it. I mean, I knew it, but it wasn't really apparent was I had really, really, really big goals, like a few really big goals. And I couldn't get myself to write them down. My head in my conversation in my head was like, you'll never get there. That's too big. Who do you think you are? And that really disturbed me. That really annoyed me. Because I realized in that moment again, that I don't think I deserve greatness. I don't think I'm worthy of that level of success or happiness or financial freedom or whatever it is. How am I ever going to get there if I don't believe I'm worthy of it? If you're struggling with weight loss, if you don't believe that you're worthy to lose the weight, that you're worth it or smoking or, or, or whatever it is, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Do you honestly think you're going to get there? And this was like a hope. Oh, holy cow. Like I had to do some, some work with that. I had to really ponder on that. I had to really pray on that and meditate on that. And that became a huge reason for me, a huge motivator for me to write it down every day and basically shut up that part of my brain, my subconscious, because I had a, a role model in my life that did not believe that he was worthy, talked very negative about himself, never took any opportunity. It was, woe is me, poor me, blah, blah, blah. And I had taken that on. I love this person, okay? I love this person. I have boundaries with this person now. They do not affect my life anymore. I love them from a distance. That being said, I had a choice a year ago in that moment. Do I say, I'm not worth that. I'm not good enough for that. I'll never get a better job. I'm not smart enough. I don't have, I'm a college dropout, y'all. Like I'm a college dropout. That was part of my, like I'm a college dropout. I don't have a degree. You know how many speaking gigs and opportunities I got turned down because I didn't have an MD behind my name or a BS behind my name. BS, isn't that funny? Um, or I didn't have, I didn't have the credentials but I knew I was smarter than those people. I knew I knew more. I knew I was more educated. And that really held me back for a long time. I didn't believe I could be at that level. But I wrote it down anyway. And now I haven't reached all my goals. There's several that I haven't, but I'm closer that internal dialogue, that self-sabotaging belief system and mindset is slowly getting more quiet. Because every single day, like that Chinese concentration camp, I write it down. I write it down. Because I'm gonna put it out there, put it on paper to help my brain believe it to be true so the actions that I choose during the day follow in those footsteps. This is the missing link. These last 90 days, these last 87 days of the year, if you want to make the most out of them, I'm not a big New Year's resolutions fan. Resolution says tomorrow I'm going to magically change. Setting goals means I'm going to keep working to them over and over and over every single day until I get there. I don't care if it takes 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep writing them down until I get there. I keep doing that over and over and over again. You have to make the decision if you want to do that or not. You just do. You just do. And what do you want? What do you want? And in asking yourself that if you get this uncomfortable feeling that like, oh, like that, that can't be me. Write it down. Because that intention, that feeling, that mindset, that outlook towards those things is hindering you, my friend. I know it is. You are unconsciously making choices or not making choices because you don't believe, because you are not clear on where you want to go. 
you are taking that side road away from that. Plow forward, my friends. Plow forward. Life is hard. Life is hard. But it doesn't mean we can't meet our goals. It doesn't mean that we can't get where we want to go. It doesn't mean that we can't be happy. And yes, one moment at a time, one step at a time, one movement at a time. But make sure that one step at a time, that one movement at a time, that one moment at a time is leading you towards something. That you have a goal in mind. Just saying. Thank you for being an inspiration. Al, I love you. You're so great. How is the soda, the soda uh, separation going, the reducing of that going? I hope it's going well. I do remember um, that goal that you said. And I hope that you're doing well with that. But, but this is really what I want to talk to you guys about today is the last 90 days. You have 87 more days till the end of the year. Have you thought about your goals? Think about it today. Think about what you want today. And then stop at the local TA. Stop at Walgreens, stop at CVS, stop at Walmart, order on Amazon, so whatever, use toilet paper, I don't care. Start writing them down. This is a non-negotiable, my friend. This is a non-negotiable. Start writing them down. Down to about four sodas a week now. Woohoo! I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Start writing your goals now. Do it. And if in your head you're saying, I'm not going to do it. Oh, that's bull. I don't have time for that. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. There is a part of you right now that does not want you to succeed. There is a part of you in your subconscious right now that does not want you to reach your goals. That is a problem. That is a problem that we can fix. Step one is deciding what you want, where you want to go, what you want to feel like, what you want to be. Step two, writing it down. Step three, telling somebody about it telling somebody about it because there's also a part of our brain that doesn't want to fail other people so the more people that know about what you want the more that actually it puts a good type of pressure on ourselves to not do it it's like if you tell everybody that that you don't want to eat desserts except like one day a week and then every time you see those people they're like are you going to eat that i thought you said you weren't going to eat desserts and you're like oh shit so or i'm not going to smoke anymore i'm not going to whatever or I want to do this. I thought you said you were gonna go for a walk every single day once you parked your truck and not like sit down and, and, and watch TV. Like what, what's the deal? Oh yeah, I, I am gonna do that. Here's a thought, watch Facebook and go for a walk. Watch Netflix on your phone and go for a walk, whatever it is. Like let's, let's multitask at least here, let's meet in the middle. Um, but, but that's what I want to share with you guys today. I really hope that this was helpful and inspirational. I want nothing more than to live your best life possible. I believe that we should never lose hope. I believe it starts with one small change. We don't need to change the world today. We don't need to change everything about ourselves today. We don't need to change everything that we've done and are going to do today, but we should get clear on where we're going. We should write it down. We should let people in and we should always ask for help. All right. If you felt like this broadcast was helpful, please share it out. Please let others know. I just want to say thank you to Jack's Chrome Shop. Without them, Chrome and Steel Radio would not be possible. Uh, Davy Crockett, TA Petro. A big thanks to Backshield. If you have not checked out Backshield, check them out. Use the code MTY10 and get 10% off your Backshield and free shipping. Best product out there for your back. It's truly amazing. Um, and that's all I got, my friends. All right. Until next time, next Thursday. I think I'm on next Thursday. Yes, I am. Next Thursday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, I will be here and we'll be talking about something amazing. And I'm not sure what yet. If you have requests or ideas or suggestions, if you want to be a guest on the show, please reach out to me and let me know. And I would love to have you on. Bye, my friends.